witness the birth, betrayal, and rebirth of the video game console that changed the world. Sony revolutionized the industry. It's that simple. This is the history of the PlayStation. In the aftermath of World War II, a company named Sony helps the people of Japan rebuild from the ashes. Sony is a classic post-World War II success story in Japan. They started making cassette recording machines. They created a small cassette player that played back and recorded stuff off of that, and that was the beginning of Sony Electronics. Innovative products such as the Walkman helped Sony become one of the most successful electronics companies in the world. Well, whenever people talk about Sony, a lot of people think about the Walkman. The Walkman was definitely Sony's first consumer product that really exploded. It was the portability of music, and everyone walked around with headphones. They really revolutionized the idea of portable music listening. As Sony gains more and more ground in the consumer electronics world, the video game industry grows by leaps and bounds. And by the early 1990s, the war for gamers' dollars is red hot. Sega and Nintendo are really dueling in the West. Sega had managed to capture 52% of the market both Europe and the United States. Sega was more innovative at the time. They were always willing to take more chances. Sega was coming out with 70, 80 games of its own per year. The strategy at Nintendo was let's hold on for the next Miyamoto game. Nintendo pays close attention when Sega unveils its latest technological advancement. So Sega came out with the Sega CD. All of a sudden, games were going to be huge. They could be 600 megabytes of information. To meet the Sega CD threat, Nintendo turns to Sony. Nintendo wanted a partner, so they went to Sony, which, of course, was a huge, successful company. Sony may not have been a video game company, per se, but the Super NES used a Sony stereo chip for its sound. Sony was certainly in its own way a player in the video game industry in a small way. So it was a race. Nintendo knew that CD-ROM technology was the way to go. And the original concept was a peripheral CD drive for the Super Nintendo that would be sold by Nintendo and a combined unit which would be called PlayStation which was the console and the CD drive together which would be sold by Sony. Sony brought in an engineer named Ken Kutaragi. Well, when you talk about the PlayStation, you just have to talk about Ken Kutaragi, who is considered the father of PlayStation. He came in to Sony in 1975. Right off the bat, he was considered to be kind of a brash engineer. Very dynamic, very energetic, full of ideas, and very creative. He's known to be a fantastic engineer and a brilliant uh, person on the engineering and technical side, but that's just a happening. Working on a video game console is nothing new to Kutaragi. He was thinking about making a 3D game console a long, long time ago while people were tinkering away on 8-bit gaming. He approached Norio Oga, who was then president of Sony, and said that we should get into the video game industry. But back then, it was just a no-go. Olga and the Sony execs were like, we are not a toy company, and we are not going to get into this business. So that was that. But now, things are different. Hand in hand, Ken Kutaragi and the people at Nintendo team up to bring Sega to its knees. But Sony is about to face a bitter betrayal that will change the course of gaming history. As Sega prepares its new CD-ROM expansion for the Genesis, Nintendo and Sony work on a CD-ROM system of their own. But Nintendo begins to have second thoughts. The big reason why Nintendo kind of balked on the Sony technology idea was that they weren't going to have any rights to the CD technology. Sony was going to retain all the making of the CDs, they were going to manufacture it, distribute it, and that totally cut Nintendo out of the picture on definitely a large profit margin. And that made Nintendo very, very nervous. So in the forefront, Nintendo's telling Sony everything's great. But behind the scenes, Nintendo went to Philips 
and said, why don't you start working on something for us? Nintendo's insecurities lead to a dramatic climax in 1991. CES comes around and Ken Kutaragi and Sony come out and they announce the Nintendo PlayStation because they don't know anything's going on. Nintendo made a sudden announcement and said, well, we're going to work with Philips on the CD technology. That didn't go very well with Sony execs and Ken Kutaragi was definitely very bummed. He went into Norio Oga's office and said, we just got backstabbed, blindsided by Nintendo. We had an agreement and they totally betrayed us. Kutaragi went back to his bosses and said, let's not leave it like this. We can make an actual game system. We won't stop with the CD-ROM, we'll build the whole system. And Oga, who was totally dead set against it before, now feeling the betrayal from Nintendo and the being the samurai corporate guy that he is, said, that's it. Pounded his fist on the desk, said two famous words, do it. And that was the beginning of the Sony PlayStation. Now, more driven than ever, Ken Kutaragi and Sony set out to make a video game console unlike any other. At first, Sony plans to release a system that plays both CD-ROMs and Super Nintendo cartridges. In 1992, 200 units of this PlayStation are manufactured, but are quickly scrapped. Sony decides to wait for the next wave of consoles to enter the fray, and intends to capitalize on CD-ROM technology. There was a big change taking place in terms of media. Game media like cartridges, CD-ROMs, this really changed the finances behind game development and game publishing. In October 1993, Sony announces that it's working on a new 32-bit game console. The name of this new system is the PlayStation X, or PSX. The CPU for this console will be designed by Ken Kutaragi himself. On November 16th, the company officially forms Sony Computer Entertainment. We formed Sony Computer Entertainment Inc. as a company, as a joint venture between Sony Corp. and Sony Music Japan. This new department raises more than a few eyebrows. When PlayStation was being mentioned here in the U.S., people were saying, can Sony deliver games? Could they really enter the hardware side? To some people within Sony, PlayStation represented the future and was very exciting, but to other people it was definitely a threat and something that they didn't fully understand. You had a lot of people that were pretty much skeptical about us getting into uh, the business. Even before we came out, we were pretty much placed in the, uh, the failure column because we were just newcomers. I remember having dinner with a vice president of Sony Records, and he told me, the PlayStation's never going to work. Sony's going to lose on this. The irony for all of us was that as much credibility as Sony had in as a brand, we had zero credibility as far as the world of games was concerned. Sony, I think, corporately was a little discouraged. How do we get into this new chartered area? Sony knows that the road ahead won't be easy, but Ken Kutaragi has an ace up his sleeve that will dazzle the entire game industry. Sony Computer Entertainment goes full bore into the development of the PlayStation. It becomes clear that this will be a console unlike any other. The biggest feature of PlayStation was going to be the real-time 3D graphics technology. At the time, the PlayStation was a faster console than anything out in the market. It could push more polygons. It gave developers a larger toolbox to work with than any of the competing consoles. And of course, it used CD-ROMs. After watching the failure of systems like the 3DO very closely, Sony realizes that processing power alone isn't enough to come out on top in the world of video games. We looked at uh, the business models um, of all of the companies uh, that have been in the space or tried to get in the space, and we asked ourselves, could we do this better? 